Prisms and pyramids. The test could also ask about prisms and pyramids. These 3D shapes appear less frequently on the test, but they could appear. So we have an example of each here. So first of all, let's talk about prisms. A prism is a 3D shape formed by con two congruent triangles in parallel planes connected by rectangles. So here we have a 345 triangle up front. In the back, we have a parallel 345 triangle, and they're connected by rectangles. Now, of course, it could be any kind of triangle, but most often what you're going to see on the test is that the triangle itself is a right triangle. That's going to be most frequent on the test. The length of the triangle connecting the two congruent triangles is called the height, regardless of whether the prism is lying down or standing up on end. We call that length the height. It is unlikely that the test will expect you to have memorized the volume of a prism. It is much more likely they will give you the formula, which is volume equals area of the base times the height. In other words, area of the triangle times that long length. The test has to give us prisms with easy triangles, triangles in which we can find the length and areas that we need. So for example, here's a practice problem. Pause the video and then we'll talk about this. In a prism with the dimension shown here, uh, the volume is the area of the triangle times the length of the rectangles. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of this prism? Well, first of all, we need to find the area of that base. The area of that base, that's just a, a triangle. Area equals 1 half base times height, 3 times 4. So that's half of 12, which is 6. So that's the area of the triangle. And then that length is 10. So the volume is 6 times 10, that's 60. So that's the answer. A, now a different practice problem. Pause the video and then we'll talk about this one. Okay. A prism with dimensions given here in centimeters is shown. What is the total surface area of that prism? Well, the total surface area, let's think about this. We have a triangle in the front, a triangle in the bank, and then we have these three rectangles here. So the bottom rectangle, 3 times 10 is 30. The back rectangle, 4 times 10 is 40. We know that hypotenuse is 5, it's a 3, 4, 5 rect triangle, so that slant rectangle is 50. So those are all the rectangles, the three rectangles. We already figured out that the area of one triangle is 6, so two triangles is 12. So now we just add all this together. 30 times 40 times 50 plus 12, and that's 132. And so the area is 132. A pyramid is a 3D shape with a square or a rectangle at the base, and from each edge, triangles slant up to join at a single point. It may help to visualize the pyramid that Mr. Khufu built over four millennia ago in Egypt. That's what's meant by a pyramid shape. Now, in the general broad picture of geometry, of course, the base could be anything. It might be a triangle, it might be a rectangle, it might be a, a square, it might be a hexagon or a pentagon or something like that. You're not going to have to worry about exotic pyramids like that. You're only going to have to worry about square-based pyramids on the ACT. So the vertex at the top of the pyramid is directly above the middle of the base. In this period, M is the middle of the base, T is the top, and the segment TM, perpendicular to the base, is the height. That's what's meant by the height of the pyramid. It is unlikely that the test will expect you to memorize the formula for the volume of a pyramid. If the test wants you to calculate that, it most likely will give you the formula. 
and the formula equals one third times the area of the base times the height. Most often the base is a square so we only need one side to figure out its area. The test could also ask us for the total surface of a prism, the total surface area. So the total surface area equals the square base plus the four triangles. The square base is easy. To get the area of one of the slanting triangle faces, we, need to, we, we know the side of the base is the base of the triangle. We need the height of the triangle, its altitude. Most typically, the test will give us the side of the square base and the height of the pyramid. The height of the pyramid is not the altitude of the slanting triangle face. Let K be the midpoint of AD and draw the right triangle TMK. So TM is the height of the period, KM is half the base of the pyramid. So the test will give us TM, which is the height. It will give us the base, we divide by that, that by two and we get MK, which is half the length of the side of the square base. Then we use the Pythagorean theorem to find TK, the hypotenuse, and TK, the hypotenuse of that triangle, is the altitude. Notice that it runs up the middle of the triangle, so that is the altitude of the triangle. And that's what we would need to find the area of triangle ATD. Here's a practice problem. Pause the video and then we'll talk about this. The pyramid shown has a square base, FG, FGHJ, with FJ, the side of the square, is 20. Point M is the middle of the square. Segment MP is perpendicular to the base and has a length of 24. The volume of the period, pyramid is given by volume equals one-third area base times height. What is the volume of this pyramid in cubic centimeters? Well. Let's think about this. The base is a square, the side is 20, so the area of the base is 20 squared, which is 400. The height is 24, so it's going to be 1 third times 400 times 20 third, 24. I'm going to actually multiply first the 1 third times 24, because the third of 24 is eight. And then eight times, 100, eight times 400, is 3,200. So the volume is 3,200. Here's another practice problem. Pause the video and then we'll talk about this. Okay. Again, the pyramid has a square base with 20 centimeters on the side, M is the middle of the square, MP is perpendicular, has a length of 24. What is the total surface area? So now we're looking for the surface area. Well, first of all, the square base, that's easy. The square base we already figured out is 20 squared or 400. Let X be the midpoint of FJ. So we're gonna have to think about this. We know that mx is 10 because the side of the square is 20 so mx is half the side of the square that's 10 and mp is given in the problem that's 24. well we have 10 and 24 and we have a hypotenuse well notice really what this is is a 5 12 13 triangle multiplied by 2. this is why it's very important to know these pythagorean triplets so 5, 12, 13 multiplied by 2 would be 10, 24, 26. We have the legs of 10 and 24, so the hypotenuse must be 26. And so that means this is the altitude of that slanted triangle, FPJ. The altitude is PX, which is 26. Now we can find the area of that triangle, 1 half base times height. 1 half 20 times 26, or in other words, 10 times 26, which is 260. So that's the area of one of the triangles. 
So now, we keep the area of the base. Four triangles is going to be 4 times 260, which is 1040. Then just add 400, and we get 1440. That's the total surface area. So the total surface area is 1440. The volume of prison, most likely that will be given on the test. You will not need to memorize this. The surface area of a prism are the two triangle ends and the three rectangles. The volume of prison, most likely given by the test. The surface area of the prism is the one square at the bottom plus the four triangles.